Welcome to my latest 10th edition Warhammer 40k Battle Report. It's Orcs versus Howling Griffins. The walls have been breached. The Orcs are going to be spilling on this side into the ruined city. And the Space Marines are going to be defending. Today is going to be a good day. I get to go up against this. Look at it. It's beautiful. The Howling Griffins. Painted by Morty and John. Hi, Morty and John. Hi, Winters. <laughs> Why having griffins? Do you like pain? Yes, I hate myself. I must be punished. But how, you did have over 2,000 points of this. I did, yeah. Then they dropped all the points. And now I can just scrape 1750. So we're doing 1750? Yes. Why did you do Howling Griffins? I mean, you paid your entire army twice. You paid all red and then all yellow. And yellow and red, as we know, are really easy colours to work with. <laughs> yeah, um... I've always liked the colour scheme. Yeah. I mean, it's been around since the days of Rogue Trader. It has, yeah. Since the Badab Wars. Um, there was an old white dwarf with the, with the GW manager from Bristol. He had one. Right. And it was over lockdown and I had a spare intercessor and I thought, hmm, I wonder if I could paint a Howling Griffin. That's one intercessor though. Yeah, and I did. And then I made the mistake of sticking it on my WhatsApp group with the likes of Mikey P and Andy Byrne and Sultan and went, what do you think of this? And they said, yeah, that's really nice. Now paint an army of them. And here we are. And here we are, two years later. So I absolutely had to get them on the channel. Thanks for coming down. And Howling Griffin's Ultramarine Successor Chapter have got a long-standing beef in the law with orcs. They do. So it had to be orcs. And so if it had to be orcs, it had to be my orc war, Ben Murphy's war. And today, Murphy is coming for this one. Of course he is. We're playing on this weird triangular deployment running down here, as you can see. It's this one. So basically the orcs are already partially in the city. I like to think that the city walls, there's another gateway here and another gateway here. There's gateways all the way along and we're spilling in. The Howling Griffins will be deployed on the other side of the battlefield. We've done chosen battlefield. My home objective is down here. Your home objective is in that ruin there with that crater. And then the other three, we just put straight down the line and we're playing priority targets, which means you get five, 10, up to 10. Uh, on the primaries in every single command phase, but then you score at the end of the game as well. So if anyone's left alive, there'll be a mad scrabble onto objectives and you can get up to 15 points on the primaries at the very end of the battle. I like that one as well because that uh, helps the person who went second mm. because the person who went second will have the last actions to push someone off of an objective here or there. The battle mat is from urbanmats.com. This was a gift from Monkey. Thank you so much, you're a legend. MartialWorld.co.uk on those things. Loads of ruins all over the place. This is the interesting thing about all these ruins and things actually is vehicles can't go through walls. And I've got quite a few vehicles and bikes that'll be dancing around them, but infantry can go through walls and there's lots of line of sight blocking all over the place. It should be a very interesting fight, is what I'm saying. It's 1750 points. Thank you for watching this video. You guys are legends. I appreciate you. I mean, you could be watching better videos. Isn't there some war zone on or something about how to build the perfect cake? Go and watch a YouTube video on how to make a perfect cake, then make the perfect cake, then eat it, and then you're eating the perfect cake. But while you're here, thank you very much. If you'd like to support as well, subscribe, thumb up, all that sort of stuff, I'd appreciate it. And if you'd like to become a member and help keep the lights on, I'd really, really appreciate that as well. So we'll start with the Howling Griffins. We have to start with the Howling Griffins. Uh, you're choosing Gladius Strike Force. Yes. Why Gladius Strike Force? Um, it's the easiest one that I can remember. Brilliant. Um, also, I think it's the more, because these are ultramarine successors, yes. it's the more ultramarine type of time. I like it as well because it's got tactical doctrine, the yep. ability to fall back, shoot, and charge, and also it's got that strat, which means you can put tactical assault or devastate. It's the most flexible of mm. them. Of course, how Oath of Moment has changed as well, so it's only re rolled all hits. So it's not Oath of Broken, it's just Oath of Moment. <laughs> Would you like to talk us through what you've got? Yes. Yeah. So it's kind of a demi company. Right. So I've got two 10 man intercessor squads at the back. Yes. They're all WYSIWYG. Um, two grenade launchers. One side has got a power sword, one side has got a fist. Nice. Um, then we've got um, some assault intercessors over here on the left. Yes. As seen, the sergeant's got a plasma pistol because that's what he came with in the Indomitus box set. Nice. Um, the chaplain will probably go with them, I think. Yeah. Um, we've got some big, fat, heavy intercessors at the sort of towards the back. Oh, where are those They're guys? In front of the jumpy. There they go. A unit of five. Yeah. 
So the assault intercessors and the intercessors are full units of ten. Yes. Go big or go home. Yes. And a five man squad of heavy intercessors. Yes. I like it. Okay. Yeah. And then the plasma jumpy dudes at the back. Full squad. Yes. Brilliant. Is that a full squad of eradicators as well? I've a full squad of eradicators. You've gone big. I've just got the one multi melter. I went slightly big. Okay. Um, a big four man squad of blade guard. Yeah. Um, including one wiping his sword with one of Stylus's army's banners. Brilliant. Just chuck that in there. Well done, Stylus. Yeah. I, that's a, such a cool model as well. Yes. Yeah. You've even quartered the shields on the blade guard. Yeah, the, the guy on the far right with um, his helmet off, he has got the original rogue trader um, colour scheme, which is quartered quarters. Right. That's how mental it was in Rogue Trader. Right. Um, I've just painted one of him. I'm not doing any more. That's just that <laughs> painful enough. Um, and then we've got um, bikes. Bikes. Uh, big, big, dread, ma not. big Nappy Dread. And then, yeah, the characters at the front. So okay. Captain Vivar, he's my warlord. Who? Captain Vivar. Is he joining the Blade Guard? He's joining the Blade Guard. Brilliant. Uh, with his banner guy. That's a Blade Guard ancient. I replaced the dead guy on a stick with a flag instead. I, the flag looks so much better than the dead guy on a stick, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got um, Epistolary Godric, the um, librarian. Right. He's going to go with one of the um, intercessor squads. Okay. And then um, the chaplain Ajax, he'll go with the assault intercessors. So, librarian with one of these squads, these yeah. two guys with the blade guard squads, chaplain with the assault intercessor squads. Did you spend any points on any enhancements? I gave um, the librarian the fancy armour that neither me nor you could pronounce when we talked about it earlier. Uh, artifice, uh, artifice. Uh, I... uh, the fancy armour. Art, art armour. Yeah. Which he's done up himself. Yeah. Means he's got a turp save and a five up feel no pain. That's the one. Brilliant. So, painting an intercessor. Yeah. How long does it take you to paint an intercessor? Just one guy? Not as long as you think. It, it looks like a week per guy to me. No, no, I, I paint them in twos and threes. Right. And I normally get them done, yeah, within a week. Two or three a week. Yeah, I paint every night. I, I'm, I haven't got much of a, much of a social life because I have children. <laughs> so once they've gone to bed, I sit down and, and paint stuff. Okay. Yeah, you are pretty proactive in your painting stuff because you're on the Instagram as well. I am, yes. Maudie and John. Maudie and John on the Instagram. Check it out for more lovely pictures of the Howling Griffins. And this is bang on 1750 points of Howling Mad Murphy's Wow. Um, I've got the thing. Right, Orcs, what do they do again? Sixes explode in close combat. Okay, so when I hit you, six is a hit, go off twice. And there is a stratagem that you can pop called Unbridled Carnage, which means five exploding close combat. And then they have the wah. Once per battle, I can declare a wah. And everyone gets a five up and vulnerable save and plus one strength and attack. And you can advance and charge in that turn. And today, Howlin' Mad Murphy's coming. He's over here. He's a war boss in Mega Rama with a Super Cyborg body upgrade for a four up feel no pain, which is one better than your five up feel no pain, and that's how orcs rock. And he's going to be jumping in a Gorkonaut with five of his Mega Knobs, and he's on a kill tally mission to kill as much as possible because there is another war boss joining this fight as well. So they're going to have a bit of a rivalry growing on. Grugger Chugger over it with no enhancements and no ride to jump into. He's just ran around on foot. But he's got a unit of knobs with him, and there's seven big choppers and uh, three power fists in that squad. The way it works is, while he's joined in that unit, they've got minus one to wound all the time, which is really good. And there is also another orc strat called Might is Right. I think it's called Might is Right. And you can put that minus one to wound on any orc unit that's not a vehicle, which is nice. That's not minus one to wound all the time. So he hasn't got a ride to run around in. But at least that unit will be minus one to wound, and he's going to try and outscore Howling Mad Murphy. In the back, I've got some shooting suit, two custom mega cannons for the mech guns. I've got a dreadnought, which is going to be clanking forward, all loaded out for close combat, no shooting at all. Two units of war bikers, knobs on the the knobs are power claws, obviously. Two units of war bikers, and then down at the front, we've got two more characters leading, two more units of boys with slugger choppers over here. The pain boy will be leading this unit of boys. Gives them a five up feel no pain. More of that feel no pain. I like feel no pain. And the grot orderly means I can put D3 back in at some point. 
And I talked about the wire going off once per battle. Well, this is a war boss, no, a knob with a war manner. That means the unit that he's a part of, all those boys with sluggers and choppers, can do the wire again. Uh, so I can give them a five up, for, uh, five up and vulnerable save twice, or give them plus one to hit and plus one, no, an extra strength and an extra attack twice. It's it's nice. I like it. And uh, the last Orc Battle report I did on the channel, um, Woof Boot Poodle did it to me, and I thought, that's a really good thing. I need to do that. So I'm doing it now. Double war is a thing. Feel no pain is a thing. So they, these two units are going to be busting forward as well. And of course, in both units, the... Uh, the knob has the power claw as well. Don't leave home without it. And then we pack some lunch just in case the boys get all hungry. Unit of grots in the corner over here. So that is 1,750 points of Murphy's Wire. Gloriously painted to level four standard by Den of Imagination Painting Studios. And all these custom bases are also from Den of Imagination as well. Thank you very much, Den. Let's go on to deployment. Here we are after deployment, there is an army of red and yellow down this side of the battle grid. The only thing staying in reserve for the Howling Griffins is the Jumpy Dudes with all the plasma, a full squad of six. They're going to be very scary when they drop in. Librarian over here with a full squad of intercessors gives them a four up and vulnerable save. Mm. It's nice. Yeah. Bikes on the flank as well. I've put my bikes on the flank down here and I've put one unit of bikes, my only reserves, I've put them in strategic reserves. So they could outflankiness at some point because they're quite quick. And then the remainder of your army, apart from the guys walking up this street here, are all in this massive ruin. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, that's my castle. That's your castle. That's my castle. There is your objective here. Yep. There's an objective in the middle of the table. There's an objective here. If the Howling Griffins control this part of the city and push the Orcs back, billions of lives will be saved. Not with Wire Banner. Pain boy with a unit of 20. Uh, Murphy is inside there with his mega knobs, death dread hiding behind. And I thought it'd be funny. I, I put him out here just for... <laughs> I thought it'd be funny if Grugga Chugger and his knobs hadn't made it into the city yet. It's not the best place for him, but it's hilarious. <laughs> and then there's one death gun. This is another bad idea. I like the idea that this mech gun is the one that battered down this particular city wall. Now the... The angle of fire on that met gun is absolutely terrible, but if anything crosses the street, we've got it. We've absolutely got it, except for the fact that it's only 36 inch range, so we might not have it. <laughs> but I like the fact that he's down here as well. And lunch, lunch is staying back here, holding on to my home objective. So if they, they get tired of all the bashing, they can come back here and eat a boy, eat a knob, eat a Gretchen, not a boy, eat the thing. Don't eat knobs. <laughs> They get very angry, they'll punch you in the face. Yeah, they're not going to like you for Eat that. Gretchen. We need to roll a dice to see who actually goes first turn. I don't know if I want first turn. Do you want first turn? You've deployed quite defensively. Yeah, no. Um, I, could guess, I could move forward and get some angles of fire, but I, I don't know. I don't know. After you, sir. Good luck. That's a two. The boys roll a five. It's Orcs turn one. The orders for the boys in turn one are just go for it. Spread out across the battlefield and take the tempting target, which the Howling Griffins are going to nominate in no man's land and get behind their lines, which we're not going to be able to do in first one, but at least, turn one, but at least they're keen. We both get a CP at the start of the command phase as well. And I've got some grots on an objective and they're thieving little gits. On a four, I would get an extra CP. Not yet. They haven't found anything yet. At the end of the movement phase, the Orcs come on charging forward onto this objective, onto the central objective, and turbo boosting with the war bikers down onto this objective here, which will be the tempting target. And that will be five points for Murphy's War. And they're sat there now. They can't shoot, they can't charge. I didn't declare a war in turn one because there was no advancing and charging to get to the Howling Griffins. But uh, I'm deeply worried about the war bikers and the counter charge with all the things. Down here, the Redemptor Dreadnought, the Outriders, and the Librarian. So behind the War Bikers, there's this big unit of 20 boys with a wire banner. So if the War Bikers get jumped on, then we can counter jump. We can we can we can jump on. They're my second wave to jump on whatever jumps on the War Bikers. Of course, the stuff down here could just shoot and annihilate the War Bikers, so I can't reach the stuff. But then you won't be taking the objective. The Hologrippers won't be taking that objective. I uh, haven't got behind enemy lines, of course. Advancing in the middle. The only things that didn't advance were this mech gun <laughs> and this Gorkonaut because I do have line of sight through a crack in the rubble down over here 
into the assault intercessors. Yes, and you're Ajax. Led by Ajax, Chaplain Ajax, and you're spending a CP on armor or contempt. Two rocket launchers, okay? Mm -hmm. D3 shots each, but they're blasts, so I'm adding two to each one. Yeah. So it's basically that plus four. Eight shots hitting on Orc. I hit! The rockets managed to slam home. I'm already surprised. Uh, they're strength nine, so I wound on twos. Now, it would be minus two, but you're in cover, minus one, and armor of contempt, another minus. Basically, three up saves. Four. Three up four. Three up. <laughs> Oh, three up saves. Each failed save will kill a dude, though. And you make every single save. That's it. Big gun on one side. Custom Mega Zapper. Mm -hmm. In the belly, custom Mega Blaster. Uh, here's the custom Mega Zapper, which is D6 plus 3. <gasps> which becomes D6 plus 5, because it's got blast. So that's the custom Mega Zapper. Good, isn't it? Nice, tidy. I'm asking, bang tidy. I'm asking, the, <laughs> adding the custom Mega Blaster in as well, because it all hits and wins the same. Uh, and it hits on Orc, so fives. Last time I hit really well. This time pretty good as well. Yeah, not bad. Two's to wound, that many. And again, it would be minus two, but back to three up saves, because I'm a contempt and cover, so five, three up saves. Oh dear. And you fell three of them. Oh dear. D6 damage a time. Kill a dude. Kill, two, kill three dudes. Three dudes. Kill three dudes in total. The other thing about this gun is it's hazardous. So if I roll ones and I fire them both like that, ah. I take three wounds on myself. Mm. Now, I would fire the twin big shooter in, but we're out of range. And you took away the ones on this side of the wall because the other thing they can shoot in is my mech gun. And because you took away the three on this side of the wall, the mech gun can't see anything anymore. So interestingly enough, that is the end of the orc shooting phase. That's it. No command phase stuff to do. No battle shop to do. I've killed three space marines with orc shooting. I'll buy that for a dollar. And it's five points to zero for Murphy's Wah. As we go into Howling Griffins. Turn one. Captain Vivar of the Howling Griffins howls out his first orders. See what I did there. Uh, get behind enemy lines. That's not going to happen in turn one. But they're keen as well. And extend battle lines. Hold their home objective and any objective in no man's land, and the orcs are all over the objectives in no man's land. Here we are after the Howling Griffins movement phase. They haven't called out a doctrine yet because they don't need to. The intercessors over here advance forward and they have assault weapons and they can now plunge fire down into the orcs in the street below. And as for extend battle, like your HQ's down here, your captain, mm -hmm. he's in amongst the blade guard. They come running, there's the eradicators ready to jump through the walls maybe next turn once the orcs commit if i overcommit, will i overcommit as an orc probably uh the heavy intercessors are locking down this objective as well and then round this flank you want to extend your battle lines by taking that objective which means killing the war bikers and you've declared them as the oath of moment target so we're going to start the shooting phase down here Starting with the Dreadnought, overcooking the big plasma gun of doom into the war bikers. I'm not popping any strats and things because you oath the moment them, and I don't think they're long for this world. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> the plasma gun's D6 plus one? Yes. Okay, let's see how many shots. The four shots. Threes to hit. No need for the reroll there. What's the strength of it when it's overcooked? Nine? Nine. Or something? I'm toughness six, you know. So it will be threes to wound me. Mm. Only two wounds. Mm. They have a six up invulnerable save. I fail them both. That kills two of them dead. And then you have a hazardous check because you overcooked it. And the dreadnought's fine. He feathered the plasma perfectly and he's got some more shots. Eight shots with the Gatling gun on threes. Rerolling those two twos. And you're gonna need fives to wound, but sixes are devastating and just ignore my saves. No. no wounds. Interesting. Couple of storm bolters, nipple guns, threes to hit with the storm. Uh, the storm bolters, re-rolling, and then fives to wound with these guys, but they're twin linked, so they're going to re-roll wounds as well. Uh, one save or four plus on the knob. He makes his save. He's still alive. The knob actually has four wounds, mm. but uh, maybe not for longer because he's going to get lit up by the intercessors. Icarus, I've got the Icarus. Number of shots. Three, Three shots. Threes to hit. They mm. all hit. Strength seven? Strength eight. Threes to wound. Mm. They all wound. What's the AP? Uh, minus one, two damage. Okay, so fives? No. 
you don't even need to fire the intercessors. The knob gets wiped out. So the intercessors are going to target the boys in the middle of the street here. Uh, lots of shots coming in. So I'm going to spend a CP on Ard as nails, mm -hmm. minus one to wound them. Here's all the bolt rifles. They all hit on threes. Dude, but boys of toughness five, and at minus one to wound, you need sixes. Some so tough guys. Really good strap. You get five sixes. Really good roll. <laughs> anyway, AP minus one, so I need a bunch of sixes. And there is a pain boy in there. So five up, feel no pain. No. You only wipe out two of them. And there's two grenade launchers in this squad. Yep. And I got blast. Yep. So that's plus four to each shot. So plus eight to these two D3 shots. Kaboom. Threes to hit. Strength four though, so sixes to wound again. Only one, two Ooh. sixes this time. No AP, so fives. And then the feeling of the pains. Another boy bites the dust. Librarian Godric casts a smite. Just a standard smite. D6 okay. shots, oh. or four shots. He's gonna hit on threes. And at strength five, with minus one to woo me, you're wounding on fives. Mm. Mm. Three wounds. At minus one, sixes, and then it's D3 a time? D3, yeah. Because this counts for my feel no pain, so roll three D3, and then we'll figure it out. Okay, so uh, one needs a five up feel no pain, one needs a five up feel no pain, and one needs three five up feel no pains, and the librarian cooks the brains of three boys. More firepower washed in from the Outriders into the same squad, nuking two more of the boys, and now we're on to the last thing left to shoot, because line sight and range is the thing. It's all the intercessors inside this ruin here, plunging fire down onto the same unit of boys, but there's two grenade launchers, yep. and it's split in fire. Yeah, because that always works. Where, where's the other shots going? I'm going to try and put two crack grenades into the dread. Into the dread bag here. Yeah. Shall we start there? Yeah. It's two single shots. Yeah. Hitting on threes. And they both hit. Yeah. And what's the strength of crack grenade these days? Strength nine versus toughness nine. Four. Is two wounds. Two, yeah. Okay, interesting. And then it's uh, AP minus two. And you minus two. Barricades, you only get barricade cover save if you're infantry. So the minus two does go through. Two up save normally though. So I need fours. I'm okay. And then we've got 16 shots washing into the boys who, let's face it, shouldn't have advanced into the middle of the street. They're not very clever. Threes to hit them. Daka, daka, daka. Oh, save the boys. Harder nails are still in effect. So six is to win. And that is three Great. sixes. So three more. Six up saves. I make one of them. And the feel no pains. Uh, that one's really cocked. So only one boy dies in that fusillade. Nine out of 20 boys have been lit up in that street. And then we found some more guns, actually. The eradicators down here, look. Yeah. They found a doorway that can shoot through. So you're firing anti-tank weaponry <laughs> into boys. Threes to hit them with all the melter rifles. And these are strength nine versus toughness five, but minus one to wound, so fours to wound them. It's gonna be very interesting. So you wound two of them. Uh, I definitely don't get a save. How much damage does each shot do? Each shot is D6. Brilliant. So two ones would be great, thanks. There's two How, ones. How's that for you? Thank you very much. <laughs> so actually get feel no pain against this. And one of them doesn't feel any pain. I like to think that the melter shot got dissipated as it tried to go through the doorway there, but one of the guys gets melted in half and the other boys laugh at him. <coughs> and then the multi belter will hit on fours. And it's it hits one. once. It'll wound on a four. And it wounds once. Again, how much damage? D6 damage, D6. right? At this range. For four. Four. Can I make four feel no pains on a boy? Of course I can. Of course I can't. What hubris is this? And with that, the shots of the Howling Griffins go silent as they rearm and reload. And they get five points for this tempting target. So it's five points each. In the start of Orcs turn two, I'm on three objectives. And you get a maximum of ten points on the primaries. Five, ten. So one on the other side of the wall and one in the gateway. You need a battle shock on this unit, which is leadership seven. Uh, and that's a fail. That means they don't control that objective, but that's fine. I still get my 5, 10 on the primaries. And I'll do it now, because I do it on camera. He's got a little grot orderly there, look. Oh, yeah. And with that, in the command phase, he can put D3 boys back in. 
gives them some lovely sweeties and two of them stand back up again as we go into orcs, turn two. So at the start of turn two, the orcs are 10 points in the lead, picking up those primaries and they're keen. They want to capture the Howling Griffin's outpost. Not going to happen, let's face it. And extend battle lines, which I'm already doing, which is good. Here we are at the end of turn two, movement phase for the boys. They're flooding down the street, down the central avenue. And one of the things I forgot to mention in the command phase was war. Yes, we've got a five off and vulnerable save and we can advance and charge. And then I spent a CP on something. Here we go. It's called Here We Go. Grugger Chugger was there with a unit of knobs, plus two to advance, plus two to charge. He rolled a long way and he wants to go flying in to this unit of intercessors that are holding down the fort there. And while he went charging in there, Howling Mad Murphy and his Gorkonaut said, well, you can go in there. You could be the first wave. <laughs> you can get lit up. There's a unit of blade guard back there. <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can go flying in there. We'll see how we get on. Uh, I am extending the battle lines there with the Gorkonaut and with the Death Dread. And we did some advancing round here. Then you popped a CP. One CP on, what's it called? Squad, Squad Tactics. That's it. And you can move... Yeah, you'd move, you move. You can move D six. Yes. Or six if you're in the tactical doctrine. What so. did you roll? I rolled six. Brilliant. So when these two units of boys came piling through this way, the intercessors that were locking down that objective went. Well, one minute. Took a couple of steps back. Yeah, Godric looked into the into the future. Didn't like what he saw. Went. Like, let's, <laughs> let's move move back a little bit, boys. There's a lot of boys coming. Yeah. Let's go into the shooting phase. Right, first up, all the boys down here got sluggers and choppers. They haven't got the assault keyword. So they are firing their guns, but technically they're not. They're just firing them into the air, screaming. There's no shots coming down this way. Uh, we're going across to the Gorkonaut, because then I had a good look down at the mech gun and realised I'd parked the Gorkonaut in front of this one. And this one. Uh, <laughs> that was very Howling Mad Murphy. He's like, ah, we want to shoot, boss. So uh, again... The only thing that is shooting is the big, is the nasty, is the Gorkonaut. Now, even though there is a unit of 10 knobs about to come crashing into them, we might fail the charge. You've only got plus two to the charge. Well, I, I feel they need some fire support. So we're going to fire in with the Gorkonaut one more time into the intercessors in the ruin here. Are you going to do armor of contempt one more time? Yeah, I'm going to keep, keep the line as thick as I possibly can. Rocket launches. Uh, oh, that's yeah. six shots in total, plus two, plus two, because the blast is ten shots. I do like the fusillades that come out from the orc vehicles. It's like sometimes just one rocket comes spiraling yeah. out of there, and sometimes <laughs> all the rockets, all come the out. rockets, and they all miss. <laughs> <laughs> like a firework display. Yeah, they pressed the button and were surprised by how many rockets came out. Um, twin big shooters. One of them hits. It's strength five. It doesn't wound. Okay, uh, the custom Mega Zapper, D6 th plus 3 with Blast again. This is good. Oh. Hopefully I can hit this time. Can I hit this time? Drop dice don't count. I hit a bit, and I wound five times. Those are three up saves because of Armour Contempt and Ruins. And if L1, D6 damage. Only one oh. wound. <laughs> Then the custom mega blaster has three shots and one of those hits and that doesn't that's it. That's it. I wound with wounded one. Hazardous checks. And I take another three damage <laughs> on myself. So the Gorgonaut has taken six damage so far and no one shot at it. That's the beauty of orc technology. And that is the end of my shooting phase. So we shall charge. This unit of knobs want to charge the intercessors that they lit up. With plus two to the charge, I think I only need a four or five. And with a 12, <laughs> that'll be a 14 inch charge. At the end of the charge phase, everyone's getting snugly down in this ruin. There's Grugger Chugger down there. This is the unit of intercessors. This is a unit of assault intercessors yes. behind, which I could, at the start of the fight phase, technically pile into and bring them into this fight. But I'm not sure if I want to do that. Maybe just, well, yeah, I think, I think I'll leave them for now. Maybe we'll see. We'll get back to it because I've got a seven inch charge over here. Yep. The knob with the wire banner wants to engage the outriders. These guys step back. So they're clearly this, this tactical squad that stepped away from the intercessors. They're not up for a fight. They're, they're, they're backing off. But these ones are revving on the bikes and things will come for them. Seven inch charge. 
That's a seven inch charge. Crump, two successful charges. Then round here, I was lining them up to go against the Griffins, but they stepped back the intercessors. So instead, we've got some eradicators in this ruin down here. And I think they're a bit closer. So we'll charge for them. That's a fail charge. So we'll CP that. And at 11, that is a successful charge. Dude, one minute, I just remembered. They failed a battle shock test. They can't do stratagems and a CP reroll. It's a stratagem. It's a stratagem. <gasps> so they got shot up and they're lit and they're eating the sweeties that the pain boy gave them. And they're like, oh, give me some sweeties. And they fail their charge. So this unit, boys, comes piling in there. I'll put these other ones back here to because they can't fight. Because you can only fight if you're in engagement range or touching someone in engagement range. And they piled into the intercessor squad as well. Of course they did. Uh, you haven't got the CP to interrupt either. No. So let's break some heads. I'm spending CP on unbridled carnage. So fives and sixes explode. Three of the boys are smacking in to the intercessor squad. And we're hitting them on threes. Fives and sixes explode with unbridled carn. Look at that. Look at all Look at the that. fives and sixes. All the choppers. All wound on fours. Seven four up saves on the intercessors. And you only lose one intercessor. Now here's all the remaining boys with their choppers slapping in to the outriders there. And you're popping a CP on armor contempt. Yep. But uh, look at that one. Threes to hit, fives and sixes explode. We're wounding. On fours. 13 threat saves. With armor of Ooh. 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 Armor of contempt not helping you much there. Mm -hmm. Two outriders get taken out. Then there is a knob with a power claw, which is going to have four attacks because of wah. And that explodes. So these wound on threes. And with their armor of contempt, they're AP minus one. Fours. Each doing two damage. He's on two wounds remaining. And then I've got my knob with wah banner. And Mordy and John, you'll like this. You know what weapon he's got? What's he got? The wah banner. He'll hit you with oh, that. <laughs> that is his weapon. Yes. Yeah. It's a big bit of scaffolding with some metal welded on the top of it. And he's going to smack you around the head with it. <laughs> nice. Wah! And uh, four attacks because of the wah. And there's an explosion again. Unbridled Carnage still kicking Two, in. Two explosions, you're right. It's strength eight. It's a very heavy sign. <laughs> so he wounds that many times and it's minus two, two damage. I mean, look at it. It's three times the size of a human being and it weighs about half a ton. So four, four up saves to keep your sergeant alive. And he gets no. smashed around the head with a wire banner. Oh dear. He gets taken out. The boys go piling in, having taken out their first target. And then over here. Mm. Right, over here, I piled into the intercessors and the outriders. It didn't work out well for me because mm. the intercessors are going to get the hit me back real hard. And your intercessors over here all have chainsaws. So I think what I'll do is not pile in to the guys with the chainsaws. I'll just fight with the guys who can fight, which is the five in the middle. Grugger Chuggers. Got a power claw, and when you call a wah, he adds one nice. because wah, add one strength and attack. And when you call a wah, he gets another four, so he's up to nine attacks. <laughs> and because he's been he's hitting on twos with his power claw because he's leading a unit, and no explosions, no explosions. His power claw, though, is strength 10 against these intercessors, so it wounds them on twos. And that was six wounds, six five up saves. Each failed save kills one. Oh, that's four taken out. Here are the big choppers that are in range and can fight, hitting on twos and no explosions. Interestingly, wounding on threes. And these are four up saves, each doing two damage. So five more, four up saves. Oh, that's another three taken out. Then there's two dudes with power claws trying to finish, finish off the last three intercessors. And these will wound on twos. And that is six more five up saves, wow. keeping those last three intercessors alive. Oh dear. And I clear the squad. So at the end of that fight, Grugger Chugger and the Knobs are feeling rather pleased with themselves. I've been running through a big squad of Beakies on their own, rather oblivious that there's a whole squad of Assault Intercessors and a whole squad of Blade Guard stood right next to them. Mm. However, we do have some fight backs. 
with the howling griffins. The intercessors over here and the librarian get to pile in and fight back. Howling griffins pile in, the one at the back can't fight, but this is 21 attacks back from normal howling griffins on threes. Five's to win though, we're tough old mushrooms. But there is no feel no pain in, oh one. I was about to say two. I was gonna say there's no feel no pain in this squad. Fives? Oh, look at that. Some great witness head there. Uh, there is a power fist on the sergeant, and of course you have your librarian. Power fist hits on threes. Hits every single time. He'll wound on threes. It's a power fist. And that's two wounds. Normally it would just kill them, but because of the wire, I've got my five up and vulnerable safe. And one of them dies. Now the librarian. Godric raises his force weapon, strikes out, and hits twice. He's going to need uh, threes to wound, and he wounds twice. Minus one. Anyway, five up and vulnerable saves, basically. I fail them both. Each strike will do D3 damage, but basically each strike kills two of the boys. And that's the end of the end uh, fight back over here. So any three boys taken out over here in exchange for your outriders and I have extended my battle lines and my war bikers haven't come in yet and it does look like I'm pushing the Howling Griffin back but I am aware of tactical doctrine. You can fall back, shoot and charge perhaps next turn and you've got six jumpy boys hurtling down through orbit. But it'll be very interesting to see what the orders are for the Howling Griffins. At the end of turn two... For the Orcs, I'm on 20 points to 5. And you're going to pick up 5 for this one, making it 20 points to 10. Mm. Don't have any battle shock to take as we go on to Howling Griffins. Turn 2. Captain Beavar says no prisoners, kill as much as possible. He also wants to check behind him with the ore specs on investigate signals, but I don't think that's going to happen this turn. The order to investigate signals has gone ignored. Instead, the Howling Griffins are going to try and kill as much as possible. And the jumpy dudes have come in down this side of the walls. It means they're completely safe from the rest of the Orc army. And they've got shots either into the Gretchen or into this mech gun over here. And then next turn, they can bounce over the walls or go where they need to go. They do have a rule called Meteoric Descent, which means you can place them very close to enemy models. But they won't get a charge this turn. Anyway, loads of plasma out there. So at least one of these units is wiped out. And taking the order no prisoners into account, you're leaving the big stuff for now. Yeah, they're, they're future Howling Griffins problems. Future Howling Griffins problems. You popped the tactical doctrine, yes. so this unit can fall back, shoot and charge, and the Dreadnought's going to come in against the unit with the Wire Banner as well. Yep. Then the Assault Intercessors went through the walls with the Chaplain. What's the Chaplain's name again? Ajax. Ajax, he wants to go in against the Pain Boy squad, so that's yep. one, two units that are in trouble. And then as for the Oath of Moment target, Krugger Chugger did overextend. There are some heavy intercessors here. Yep. There are some eradicators which decided not to go through the walls and shoot at the vehicles. No. <laughs> Instead fire down into the it, knob unit. It took a lot of there was it took a lot of discussion. I I think I've been greedy going through the war. Grumpy yeah. Chugger needs to die. He needs to die. And then your captain and the honour company will go flying into him as well. If you manage to pull this off and get rid of all of these orcs, my footprint will suddenly be very reduced and the tables will turn. If you pull this off, this could be the game. I need, I need to do a lot of damage because Murphy is coming. Murphy is coming for you. Yeah. Starting down this side of the street one more time, popping a strat, Arda's nails one more time and firing the intercessors into the boys. 14 shots hitting on threes, all the bolt rifles. But six is to wound because of Arda's nails. There's a six, five up and bun, one dies. Two crack grenades on threes, one of them hits, wounds on a three because crack grenade. Five up and bun, another guy dies. Now Godric, the librarian. Cast Smite. Thanks. Two shots of electricity come flashing out. Which wound? Hit on twos. Three, sorry. What am I talking about? And wound on fives because of Arda's nails. No wounds. Okay. He's got a bolt pistol. He's got a bolt pistol. He whips out his pistol. He hits. Thanks. Ah! He wounds. <laughs> and he kills one. Shoots one. Headshot. Now onto the Dreadnought. D6 plus 4 shots with the plasma right now because of blast and that is good. 
Ten shots. Three's to hit. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Is that only two hits? No, there's... Uh, three, four, four, four hits. There's four hits. Oh dear. Four hits. Looking through the camera there. Uh, strength nine, but minus one to wound, so force to wound. One, one. wound, no, and I Sense make it. the save. The plasma just splashes into the lines, and it's like a light shower. We like it. <laughs> uh, we have got the storm bolter. We've got the Avenger gun. Storm bolter's got four shots. Big storm, storm bolter. Storm bolter. Threes, two hits, sixes. No, nope. no wounds. Gatling gun of doom. Threes to hit. Threes to wound, sixes at no, fives to wound because of Arda's nail, sixes are devastating, so no saves on them. So that kills two as he sprays lead in the lines and five, he kills five. Mm. Now the Icarus pod, D3 shots for one shot, which misses. misses. Eight boys got wiped out from that shooting attack, perfectly softened up for the charge. Now we're coming across to anti tank fire <laughs> eradicators. Going into Grugger Chugger's mob. You've got five Milter rifles. These will hit on threes. And you hit every single time. But they are minus one to wound because they're led by boss. So force to wound them. And you wound all the Ooh. times. Five of them vulnerable saves because of the wire. <sighs> Nothing. D6 damage a time, they have two wounds each. The ones on this side of the wall are in melt range and you're insta killing them. So I'm going to put them on the guys behind the wall. So if you roll any ones, a guy will stay alive. Um, no, <laughs> five of them gone. And a multi melter in that squad, it needs fours. One hit. I can re roll because of most. Oh, yeah. All the hits and fours to wound. One wound. One failed save. That's another dead boy. The pain train doesn't stop though, the heavy intercessors are going to unload into them. Not everyone can see though, because a bit of a conga line going on here. Mm. They are hitting on twos though, because they're heavy and they stood still. And you get that. to re-roll. And it's strength five versus toughness five, but a minus one to wound. Five. Fives to wound, but the heavy, heavy stuff of doom. And that is three wounds. Three, five plus some vulnerable saves. It'd be nice if I made one of these. Well, I made one, but that does kill another knob. After the heavy intercessors, the blade guard and the characters fired in as well, but no more war wounds caused. So Grugger Chugger has stood there with three of his knobs, screaming at the beakies, come get me. Then in the central street, this unit of boys got lit up by the assault intercessors. No wounds caused. And last thing left to shoot in the shooting phase. Is down into the wilds. Are you putting the jumpy boys into Gretchen? Just kill Gretchen. No, I think I will shoot the big gun. Shoot the big gun. Yeah. I would, Coco. Okay, this is toughness five with five wounds and a five up and vulnerable save. Your plasma does two damage. Yeah. But if you overcook, you can go to three damage. Yeah. Because at two damage a time, you need at least three to get through. Hitting on threes, wounding on threes, five. Up. If you overcook it, you only need two to get through. What's the worst that can happen? Are you going to overcook? No, because I could roll six ones. Oh, go on, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> no, I will I will err on the side of caution. You're being sensible. That always works. That's not very orky. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 12 shots, hitting on threes. Maybe you should have overcooked. Maybe I should have overcooked. Wounding on threes, but twin linked. At least you get a re-roll. That's Good four job. wounds so far. Five wounds. So if I make three of these, you don't kill the gun and it turns around and shoots them. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. I make one. You kill the gun. They actually, they actually blow up. It doesn't blow up. The gun's wiped out. The next question is, of course, aren't they scared of the Gretchen they just dropped in behind? No. No, of course not, no. So we're on to the charge phase. The intercessors and the dreadnought can't really fail mm -hmm. against the charge, against the wire banner. You've got the assault intercessors led by a chaplain. Yep. Going against the pain boy squad over here. Yep. And then the blade guard are going to go charging in against Grugger Chucker. So we're going to start the fight phase down here with Vivar and the blade guard. And he's spending a CP on. On the chapter. Which gives them Lance. Yes. So plus one to wound because I've got minus one to wound. So that kind yeah. of cancels itself out. We didn't think we could get everyone in assault, but everyone's in assault. Mm. And your banner and Vavar have a once per battle thing. Are you calling upon the once per battle things to give them extra bonuses? No, I'm going to keep that in my pocket for Ooh. when Howling Mad 
Murphy turns up. <laughs> yeah, this is just an appetizer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got all excited thinking, oh yeah, I'm killing the war boss, forgetting that maybe it's not there. He's normally the war boss, you know, but uh, he just he defers to Murphy when Murphy's around, otherwise Murphy will rip his arms off. I'm very sensible, very sensible. One more thing, Blade Guard have a stance thing. They can reroll hit rolls of one or reroll armor saves of one. Um, they don't need the reroll hit rolls of one because of Oath of the Moment. Mm-hmm. So you're going into the defensive stance just in case any of the knobs survive. Yeah. Because you're hitting on threes and yeah. you're rerolling all the hits right now with Oath. Here we go. Of the Moment. And you need the reroll. Yeah. After the reroll, only one miss. Yep. Forced to wound now with Lance and things. Good luck, boys. Right, lots of wounds, each doing two damage, five plus invulnerable save, three boys in there. Okay, one's dead, two's dead, just two. All are dead, right, so all of these goes on Grugger Chugger, I need to check his invun. He's got a five plus invulnerable save and six wounds, each of these doing two damage. He takes six wounds, I'm not going to CP reroll it. No? Because then that just means Vavar, your captain, gets to cut his head off. Yeah. And I don't want him to... Is his head is already off. It's fine. We can glue it back yes, on again. Staple it back on. You work. You wipe the squad. So while the captain squad has completely wiped out Grugger Chugger and his unit, I've got two CP. Mm. And here's Chaplain Ajax attacking this squad. So let's pay to interrupt. <gasps> here's all the regular attacks from the boys. Hitting on threes, sixes go boom, boom. The wah is still in effect. Look at all the sixes. Look at all those winter's heads. Dude, I ended up with more hits than attacks. <laughs> Don't love orcs. I love orcs. Threes to wound because of wah. And these are all giant. four up saves. What? <laughs> Such a child. I know. Wait, stop talking about my head. <laughs> Fours. Fours. Here we go. Oh. Each doing one damage, but that's a lot of wounds. It is, yeah. Turns out, that's all the intercessors dealt with. It's just your chaplain. Just Ajax. There's a power claw on the knob and a power claw on the uh, pain boy. These hit on fours. I only hit twice. No, I hit three times, that explodes. Ah. I'm wounding you on twos. There you go. Invulnerable saves. Four plus to keep Ajax alive. And he takes four damage and I think he's dead. So far in this fight phase, it's one goal each. You've wiped out one of my units. I've wiped out one of your units. But now we come down to Mr. Redemptor Dreadnought, the Librarian and the Intercessors attacking the WAH Banner Squad. Here's the regular Intercessors on threes and fives to wound. Three saves. Three die. Fist on a three. Hits all the times. Wounds on threes. Wounds twice. Two more die. Now Librarian Godric hits three times. Five to wound though. I said six. Uh, Three's to wound then. (laughs) Yes. He he wounds all the times. Uh, That's another three wiped out. Eight of them are dead. The Intercessors consolidate in, then the Redemptor piles in and he fights on threes. Massive Fist of Doom. And he gets uh, three hits. He'll wound on twos. And he wounds all the times. Five up and buns. One of them manages to dodge the blow. It's three damage a time. Yep. That kills him. And I think a knob with War Banner has three wounds. He does. Kills them both. You clear the squad. And at the end of Howling Griffin's turn two, they pick up five points. For no prisoners, wiping out as much as possible, making it 15 points to the Howling Griffins and 10 points to the boys. And the counter charge down this side of the battle grid was hugely successful, wiping out everything that came nearby. And of course, dead mech gun on the other side of the mm. battle grid. The only time where someone fluffed their lines was the chaplain in the middle got counter counter charged yeah. by this unit of boys down here. At the start of my turn. As well as the five points, I'm going to get another five points in the lead. I'm going to get another ten points for being on these two primaries down here. And I think the Gretchen now are in trouble. <laughs> so we go to Orcs turn three. The boys are feeling the pressure. They want to defend their stronghold, but also secure No Man's Land. Take any two objectives in No Man's Land and try and lock this battle grid down. They're breaking into these ruins here. We don't want to be pushed out. 
It's not easy being green. Sometimes you've got to be brutal and sometimes you've got to be cunning. And this time we're going to be a bit cunning because Grugger Chugger, sorry, Murphy saw what happened to Grugger Chugger yeah. and he ain't getting out. <laughs> He's staying there for now. Also, he's securing no man's land with his Gorkonaut and the Death Dread there securing no man's land. And another reason why I'm not getting out is because I don't think you can hurt it very much in close combat. Yes, you're Blade Guard and you've got some weapons and sixes. To, you can hurt it, but not too much. Mm. The thing that can really hurt it in close combat is this unit of eradicators down here. Yes. So I need to do something about that unit of eradicators. Yep. So what I've done is my surprise win for this game so far have been these guys wiping out your assault intercessors. Yep. They're going to come flying through, try and deal with your eradicators. And then my vehicles will be relatively, they'll be safer. And then maybe Grugger Chugger gets out. Then yep. he can stop being cunning and start being a bit brutal. Meanwhile, down here, <laughs> I need to uh, defend my stronghold. And I have under no illusions that those Gretchen have got this stronghold. <laughs> so this unit of war bikers came speeding on this way. And the knob in the war biker unit is in range of that objective as well. Uh, you can probably shoot me, OC me off of that. Mm. And probably stop me defending my stronghold. But uh, I'm trying. And you did declare overwatch down here. Yes. Which we're going to get to in a minute. Yep. You can overwatch. And then round here, well, yeah. You shoved the gun forward. I, sho I shoved this gun forward. We measured. Yep. And just by... I held your tip and everything. You held the tip of my tape. I did. Thanks. And that, <laughs> that gets the mech gun in range to shoot down at your dreadnought. Yep. So uh, we'll start off with the overwatch, though. Yeah. Um, can I encourage you to shoot at some Gretchen one more time? You can try. So you're shooting at the bikes. Now, if you overcut charge, can I encourage you to overcharge? Because bikes have three wounds each, except for the knob, who's got four. So each one will get through, will kill a bike if you overcook it. How uh, tempting is that? Now you've tempted me. So you're overcooking. Yeah, I'm listening to Winters. Don't listen to me. I'm listening. Okay. Six is to hit with all your overcooked plasma. Just remember to keep your finger off the trigger. Yeah, here we go. You get a hit. Yeah. Okay, it'll wound on a three, but twin linked. So you get to re-roll the wound. You get to re-roll the wound. See, that worked. I've got a six up and vulnerable save. And because you overcooked it, you do kill one of the war bikers. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> if you roll a one, it'll be a sad day back at the canteen. Here we go. No but ones here. No, no ones. ones. No, no ones. ones. There's a one. One, one. One, one. We traded. I'll take that. We traded one for one. Maybe what happened was he didn't really over. They fired back at him. There was yep. one hell of a firefight down here and one of the brothers fall and fallen in the firefight. Maybe one of the Gretchen shot him. That would be a bit. That would be that really embarrassing. Really good, hey, let's do that now. I'm going to shoot you with my grot blasters. Do you want to armor contempt or anything? <laughs> uh, I can't. Um, no. You're getting, <laughs> you're getting shot at by lunch. They hit you on fours. I get three hits. The strength three, your toughness six. Yeah. I don't do any wounds. <sighs> so the war bikers will fire in, hitting on an orc. That's really good shooting. That's some good shooting. Fives to wound. Twin linkered. Look at these war bikers. The gunfight continues. And that is four at AP minus one because you're in certain range. Half range. Awesome. Oh no, it's, uh, min it's not minus one, it is threes. It is threes and just below. Beyond five, nine words. I'm excited. Threes. <laughs> awesome some threes. You're okay. Lots of explosions, gunfire happening this side of the walls. The boys on the other side is wondering what the hell is going on. Uh, over here, the only thing that the Gorkonaut can see, because, you know, these are really high ruins and things, is his custom Mega Zappa is coming down here into the Redemptor Dreadnought. Spending a CP on our Contempt one more time, but how many shots do I pull off? Six shots. Fives to hit. A hit. Strength 10. Toughness 10. Doesn't wound. <laughs> okay, we're firing in the mech gun as well, mm. which is D6 shots for two shots. Which hit on fours, I'm a grot. Strength 12, this thing. Wounds on threes. Minus three. Minus two becomes minus... What is it? Minus two. Yeah, uh, three up save because of armor contempt. And you make the save. And the gun doesn't get hot. Mm. We've been remembering that. Uh, 
that's the end of my shooting phase. What did I kill? I didn't kill anything. You killed one of your guys yeah. in your in my shooting phase. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> but I am securing no man's land and I have started to defend my stronghold. And these boys here who passed their battle shock this time can hardly fail a charge into no. the eradicators. Not when they roll a 10, they can't. No. Crump, we make the charge. I put these two boys up here, but they're really below because getting them in and out under that, it's really tricky. It is and it's spiky. I've, I've made myself bleed already. Uh, and I'm spending a CP on unbridled carnage one more time so fives and sixes explode because your chonky boys are quite chonky. Here's all the lads hitting on threes. Fives and sixes again. Good roll on the fives and sixes. Again, more blows landed than I actually had blows. You know what that makes me think? It makes me think like I'm getting you on the backswing as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> Caught a few on the backswing. Fives to wound though, chonky lads. And that's okay. Four up saves, good luck. I got three wounds each though. Oh, it's not bad. Uh, okay, that's not bad. That's one and a bit. One and a bit. But here's the power clause from the pain boy and the dude. Um, so they explode back in. Great. Actually, I think it's forced to hit that many hits. Uh, strength nine. I'm going to wound you on threes because mm. you're chunky. Right. They all wound and they're all minus two, two damage. So all five up saves. One was on one wound Ugh. and he gets taken out and another one gets taken out and one's down to one wound. So three are left, one's on one wound, and then the pain boy is an erty syringe, which misses. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to stab you with his needle and tried to poison the last guy. Now the eradicators can fight back. Crumping on threes. Crump, crump. Oh. Oh, three misses there. And uh, actually managing to hurt them on fives, because they're tough orcs. They are. Nope. Nothing. Mm. Nothing. Interestingly enough, you don't have to take the battle shock test because you're not below 50% strength. No. And we're locked up there. And you've popped the tactical doctrine already, so they're not falling back and shooting. Mind you, you can. There's that stratagem that you can pay to allow them to fall back and shoot. Mm. Mind you, do you need them to fall back and shoot? I mean, there's a massive command squad stood there that could go wailing into them. Mm -hmm. But that is the end of Orcs, turn three. And I've secured No Man's Land one. I'm racking up the secondaries. I'm defending my stronghold. But how much, for how much longer though, were these jumpy lads out in the wilds? At the start of Howling Griffin's turn three, they're gonna pick up 10 on the primaries, making it 35 points to 25. They're 10 points behind the Astartes. So let's find out what their orders are. Over the Vox, Captain Vivar orders the jumpy dudes to deploy a teleport homer in the Orcs deployment zone. Whether the jumpy guys listen to that or not is another matter because they've got Gretchen and war bikers right in front of them. Also, the Howling Griffins want to assassinate one of the Orc characters. In the movement phase, the Inceptors shout out over the Vox, negative, Captain Vivar, we cannot deploy a teleport homer. We need to stop the Orcs defending their stronghold for now. So let's see if the jumpy boys are able to do that. Meanwhile, you spent the CP you gained this turn for the Eradicators to fall back. Yes. Because the other order is to assassinate this pain boy. He's been a pain. He has. He's and, been a real pain. And a boy. So after dealing with Grugger Chugger's unit, the Blade Guard are going to come round and deal with this unit here while the heavy intercessors stay still. These guys have never left this ruin the whole game. No. <laughs> it's, you've, you've come to me. I'm yeah, have to. orcs. I've come this way. Yeah. yeah. And then around here, you're holding on to this objective. The Dreadnought is chonking down the battlefield and we might have a Death Dread versus Redemptor off as we go on to the shooting phase. Oh, one thing I didn't ask you actually is, who is your Oath of Moment target? This, I mean, the Pain Boy clearly needs to die. It's the most scary thing in your army, of course. The Gorgonaut? The Gretchen. <laughs> why, why on earth <laughs> are you Oath of Moment in some Gretchen? I need to clear... That objective. Yes. So I'm going to shoot the bikes. Yes. And I'm going to try and squish the Gretchen. Okay. 
Well, that's it. No one's ever declared an oath no. of moment target on Gretchen in the history of 40k ever. In fact, if you're in the comment section and you've ever <laughs> oath of moment some Gretchen, I need to know. Like, I did that. Because, yeah, I've got OC of two here. You've got yeah. OC of one. Yeah, so, I, I like to think we're actually, we're actually oath of moment in the objective. That's right. The, but, but, yeah, maybe okay. it's the little goblin, fellas. It's not, no, it's, we need this. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. But well, we start the shooting phase down this end of the street. The intercessors put all their bolt rifles into the death thread and didn't wound it. But here are two crack grenades that potentially could wound it. And one of them hits and will wound on a four. It doesn't wound it. That was just tracer fire though, because the dreadnought is firing in as well. Overcooking a plasma. Love it. D6 plus one shots. For seven shots, he's angry. Three's to hit. Oh, oh, that's five ones. <laughs> Yahtzee. You get a hit. <laughs> Force to wound. Oh, well. It, oh, okay. Uh, let's do all the other shots. If only I'd have the moment did that one. It, it might have helped. It might have, yeah. And after the remaining shots go in from the Redemptor, the Death Threads only lost a wound. Lots of whiffing going on there. However, mm. down in this furball fight in this ruin here, not a lot of whiffing happened. Basically, there is the pain boy left with three boys because they get lit up by eradicators that pop the tactical doctrine for mm -hmm. a strat. So they fired in with melters. You had heavy bolters from the heavy intercessors and all the blade guard. I don't think my pain boy is long for this world. He's just got three mates with him and he was supposed to take out those eradicators uh, and he failed. He failed in his mission. At least he got rid of that pesky chaplain though. He did. So the last thing left to fire out in the wastes trying to stop these units defending this stronghold are you firing the jumpy boys into the Gretchen or the bikes the bikes can I interest you in overcooked cooking no it works really well yeah well, I will I will hold off okay uh, hit it on threes they're not the oath of moment target though no they you made them a Gretchen and that's five misses hmm hmm hmm, hmm. threes to wound Oh, dear. You win twice. Oh, dear. They have a six up and venerable safe. Okay, you kill a bike. My knob is still there within range of that objective, and that is the end of the shooting phase. Mm. Are you charging? Yes. Charging the Gretchen. You make it into the Gretchen. Let's see if they manage to withstand that. And then over here, the Blade Guard are going to attempt to charge the Pain Boy squad. Needing a four. That works. Then finally, the Redemptor Dreadnought needs a nine. Nine? Nine. Nine, and you don't have a CP. Nope. Because you spent the one you got this turn to full back shoot with the Eradicators. I did. Okay. Okay, jumpy dudes attacking Gretchen, <laughs> who are the Oath of Moment target. You're hitting on threes. Re-rolling. <laughs> you hit every time. C. 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 It was, a, it was good, it was good. good. Right, your strength four. Yes. Gretchen and Toughness 28. Okay. Yeah, it's like treading on Legos. They're really hard. Yeah, you don't want that. No, they're no. Toughness 2. Two's to wound. How many do you get? Is that 10 wounds? Yeah. They have a 7-up save. Yep. So no saves. You wipe the squad. Just. 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 And in the end, it was perfect. You consolidate forward to get in range of that objective marker, and you OC me off of it. I'm no longer... Defending that stronghold. See, the, Oz, the Codex of Stardust, um, would have told me to. Who, who'd have thought it? Just, yeah. Uh, yeah, Oath of Moment in Gretchen for the win. That's perfect. Right, let's go on to the other big fight. Where you have a bajillion Blade Guard attacks into the Pain Boy squad. And no amount of feel no pain could keep that Pain Boy's unit alive. In fact, you'd have wiped out ten times as many Orcs there. That was glorious. And that is the end of Howling Griffin's turn three. And they get another five more points. For assassinating a character, which means they're five points behind still. But you've stolen that objective off of me, but I still get five, ten points for these two objectives in the middle of the battle grid. But more interestingly, even though you're 15 points behind, I've got a mech gun, I've got a death dread, and I've got the unit inside the Gorkonaut, and that's it. As we go into Orcs turn four. I might be running out of assets, but Murphy isn't running out of shouting at people. Overwhelming force. Kill units in range of objectives and no prisoners. Just kill. 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 In the orc movement phase, the war biker knob pulled a wheelie 
and disappeared inside the walls there. It's not that my orcs are conceding, giving up outside of the city walls here. And it's not like he's scared because of all the Plasma King flashing in. No, 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 no. It's not that at all. The story I'm telling is we want to get inside the city. That's where all the loot is. So he's pulling wheelies. He's gone inside the city and he's moved around to get on that objective there, which my mech gun is double covering. And I know that Morning John has kept deployed teleport homer in his hand. So he could stay there with the jumpy dudes and deploy a teleport homer score, but that's fine. That'll be the jumpy dudes out of it for one more turn while all the loot is nice and on the inside in the city. Kill stuff, overwhelming force on objectives. Probably not going to happen. And I've decided, even though it's really late in the game, to keep Howling Mad Murphy inside the Gorkonaut. You won't get outside of your ruin. <laughs> I'm not getting out of my Gorkonaut. We stay within our fortresses of solitude. Well, you come out first. You say boo first, then I'll jump on you. Not you jump on me. That's not how this works. <laughs> He's being very cunning. He's staying in there because I can't get overwhelming force. What I can try and do, though, is get no prisoners by firing this gun in, the Gorkonaut in, and shooting the Death Dread in there into your Dread. Try and kill that, trying to get a couple of points for no prisoners. So let's do that. And let's start off by firing the mech gun in. See how many times it shoots. Not very many. The Dreadnought's armor are contempting. This hits once at strength 12. It wounds once, so it'll be a three up save instead of a four up save because of armor of contempt. And you make it. Does this gun get hot? Nope. Okay, on to the big thing of doom. Two D3 rockets coming out from the Gorkonaut. Unfortunately, it is a Gorkonaut, so I don't hit on Grot, I hit on Orc. And a miss. Right, D3, D6 plus 3 shots from the big Mega Zapper. The 6 shots. Which hits on 5s, nothing. <laughs> and then the 3 shots with the custom Mega Blaster, which hit on 5s. One of them hits. It'll need a 5 to wound. Doesn't wound. And both of them get hot. And this time, the gun doesn't overcook in my hey. hand. Yay. Uh, and then I've got a lot of anti-infantry fire as well. Yep, yeah, they fired in and bounced off the redemptive red knot as well. You know, like last turn, I didn't kill anything in the shooting phase. Mm. It's all very orky. We're going to mm. do it in the punchy phase. The Dreft Dread doesn't have any guns. It's just all claws. He charges your redemptor. He makes the charge. And I'm spending the CP I've got this turn on tank shock. Looking for fives and sixes on the tank shock. Oh, nothing. All right, I just have to rip him apart with my dread claws, hitting on threes, and that six explodes. And these are strength 10 versus toughness 10. So force to wound. I do do three wounds. That is three four up saves on your on your Redemptor Dreadnought. You failed two of them. Mm. It would be three damage a time, but it's Redemptor Dreadnought. Two damage a time. So the Redemptor's on eight wounds. The Death Dread's on seven wounds. Can it kill it? Can it fight back? Threes to hit. Uh, I see two so far and I cocked one. We see three. Three hits. Okay. I was winning you on fours. You win me on threes. Only one wound. I need to make a five. I don't make the five and I don't reduce damage. So the Redemptor Dreadnought's on four wounds remaining. That's the end of that fight. I don't kill anything in the fight phase. Don't kill anything in the shooting phase. And I certainly don't score any points. <laughs> so at the end of turn four for the Orcs, it's still 15 points in the lead for the Orcs. But you're on 10. You're going to get 10 on the primaries. Mm. Which means that the Howling Griffins are only five points behind as we go into Space Marines turn four. Finally, the Howling Griffins might be able to deploy a Teleport Homer in the Orc lines and also storm a hostile objective, take an objective off of the Orcs. After the movement phase, the Inceptors have finally cleared away the Orcs from the Wasteland and now they're deploying a Teleport Homer. Yep. So they did follow the Captain's orders just a bit later. Yeah. Then down in the middle, you got a CP this turn and you spent it on... Tactical on the Dreadnought, so yes. it can fall back and shoot. Yes. But you pop the Assault Doctrine yes. to advance and charge. Yeah, and I've moved these guys out to take the objective off the big stomper thing. Yeah, it's got an OC of 8. Blade Guard have only got an OC of 1, but with the banner in there, yep. it doubles up their OC. It does. So after the charge, even if you don't rip the Gorkonaut open, you will storm mm. a hostile objective, and that will put you into the lead. But can you rip the Gorkonaut open? The Eradicators as well. You should have been dead. 
after withstanding that assault from the Pain Boys unit have jumped back down off of that crate and they've got straight shots in at the Death Dread. It's probably not long for this world. And what is the Oath of Moment target this turn? I'm going to go with the gun. Not the Gorkonaut. Not the big stompy robot of doom. Why the gun? Why are you thinking gun? You're not well, thinking, I'm are not you? I'm not thinking. I was going to go gun. <laughs> I've you, got like four you see like the left. smoke coming yeah. out of my ears? Yeah. It depends. I mean... Let's go with a Gorkonaut. We'll kill a Gorkonaut. You sure? Yeah. Final answer. Final answer. Let's go to shooting phase. <laughs> Okay, but we're going to start the shooting phase with the Eradicators firing point blank at my Death Dread. Melt Rifles hitting on threes. And they get to re-roll everything when they hit a vehicle. So they both hit. Strength nine? Yes, force to wound. And they both wound. AP is a lot, but it is... I've got a little bit of cover. Minus four? Yeah. There's minus three. Five up saves. So I'm going to be okay. I'm not going to be okay. How much damage is it? It 2d6 is. plus 4 at this range, right? Yeah, and I can re-roll the damage as well. Brilliant. I've got 7 wounds left and you haven't even fired the multi melter yet. You don't need to fire the multi melter yet. The Dreadnought dies and melts and doesn't explode, just turns into a pile of slag. Next, we're coming on to the Redemptor Dreadnought. It's overcooking its plasma, of course it is, and going into the Oath of Moment target, the Gorkonaut, and then all the small arms are going to rain down into the mech gun. Here's the number of shots for the macro plasma d6 plus 1 shots. For three shots. Which hit on threes, a re-roll them for Oath of Moment. And you need one of the re-rolls. But it's a big stompy robot of doom, you're gonna need fives to wound it. It is toughness twelve. And you get a wound. There's a five up and vulnerable safe. Which I fail. I take three damage. But do you take three damage on a roll of one of a hazardous check? No. After we fired in all the small arms, that mech gun is no longer there. The Dreadnought taking out one of its targets, the Gorkonaut down to 11 wounds remaining, and then the Blade Guard go charging in. And the Redemptor wants to follow suit. This will be a nine inch charge to get your Dreadnought in as well. And that's an eight. You do have one CP. Come on, boy. Why not? And that's a 10. The Redemptor Dreadnought goes smashing in there as well. Now, Maudie and Johnny, I have an interesting decision. Yeah. I've got two CP in my hand. You have. I can interrupt. Uh, but those Blade Guard have a four up and vulnerable safe in close combat. Yep, and I'll go into the stance that lets them reroll ones to uh, on their invun. On their save. Yeah. So probably go with the Redemptor first. Yes. The Redemptor hits on threes. And it's the Oath of Moment target. You didn't even need it. Nope. Forced to wound there. It's a big, chunky robot of doom. Three wounds, are you still doing three damage? I have, five up and vulnerable saves. I make one of them, I make none of them, I take nine damage. The Gorkonaut is on two wounds remaining. <sighs> so at this point, it'd be crazy not to interrupt. Now, strangely, I'm gonna hit the Redemptor back. The reason why I'm doing this is if I kill the Redemptor now in your turn, then when Murphy gets out, I can kill the Blade Guard then. That's, that's, the, that's his thinking anyway. Okay. So I've got four attacks with my big Clory thing against your Redemptor, but I'm hitting on fours because he's a bit wind. I hit all the times anyway. Strength 18. <sighs> wounds on threes. He wounds twice at minus three, two, five up saves on the Redemptor Dreadnought. And he failed them both. And that is 12 damage on the Redemptor Dreadnought. Does it blow up? Because the chain reaction could hurt. Of course it goes boom. So the Redemptor and Gorgonaut are locked in a death spiral. Yep. It does D3 mortal wounds. Yep. So I'll roll for you, you roll for me. Okay. So I'll do D3 mortal wounds on your blade guard. Are you ready? Go on then. I don't kill a blade guard. I just hurt one. Yep. But you do D3 on the Gorgonaut. It's only got two wounds left. No pressure or anything. Kaboom. The Gorgonaut is destroyed... And the Gorkonaut could blow up <laughs> on a six. And oh. it doesn't blow up. Massive explosions in the middle of the battle grid. That's the end of the Space Marines turn four and the Howling Griffins have deployed a teleport homer. They have stormed the hostile objective and they are five points in the lead finally as we go on to Orcs turn five.
Right, before I do anything, I need to pass a Battleshock test here to get five points and make it a draw. So I'm going to spend the CP that I've got to make the game a draw to pass Battleshock tests. Mm. And now let's find out what my orders are. I kept no prisoners. Kill as much as possible. An area denial. Kill everything in the centre of the battle grid. Morty and John. Yeah. Guess what's in the centre of the battle grid? Your Blagar <laughs> unit. In fact, that objective is the centre of the battle grid. Yeah. So I'm not moving. Let's just shoot loads of stuff first. The sound of hard round and explosions fill the air one more time as the orcs rain everything they can into the blade guard unit. And uh, the shield wall holds. The shield wall held. No damage caused. So now Murphy and the Meganoms. Charge. Crump, we get in there. At the start of the fight phase, are you doing any shenanigans? I don't have any CP left. Yes, I'm doing plenty of shenanigans. Okay. So I'm popping Armour of Contempt. Nice. And then Captain Vivar is popping his Finest Hour. What does that do? It, um, start the fight phase, um, he gets plus three attacks on his melee weapons, and those weapons have devastating wounds. Ouch. Okay. And then the Blade Guard Ancient yes. is doing his once per battle um, Deeds of Heroism. That is plus one attack characteristics in the melee weapons for all the models in the models unit. Sorry, what What now? The Blade Guard will have an extra attack? Yes. Well, let's hope I kill them all in the fight phase. Let's, let's, let's do some slaughtering. Right, Murphy's got an huge chopper. He hits on twos. He hits all the times. It's strength 12. So he wounds on twos. He wounds three times. Three, four plus invulnerable save. Rerolling ones because defensive stats on Blade Guard. And one of them falls because one was on one wound. So Murphy takes out one of them. Now, two of the Megnobs have twin kill saws. They'll be hitting on threes. And there's an explosion. So that's four hits. And twin kill saws are strength 12. So they all wound and then minus three, two damage as well. So four ups. And the shield wall holds. And then power claws. On fours, three, sorry, because we've been led by someone. And those are some explosions going back in there. Those are some good claw actions there. Uh, strength, nine. A blade guard's still toughness four. They are, aren't they? Yes. Twos to wound them. Four plus saves. Rerolling the ones. Two damage a time. And at the end of all of that, I only take down two blade guard. Now we do the fight back with the blade guard hitting on threes. Mega knobs are tough though, so they're winning on fives. At minus two, the mega knobs need four up saves, but each does two damage. That's one dead mega knob, one's down to one wound. Now Captain Vavar's finest hour on twos with a bajillion attacks and he only drops one of them. Fives to wound. And he doesn't wound. Finally, the Ancient, hitting on twos. Fives to wound. Okay. Two wounds, two up saves. What was that one? No, he doesn't kill any more Meganops. And with this big fight ongoing in the middle of the battle grid, that is the end of Orcs turn five. And I don't get any points for no prisoners, and I certainly haven't got area denial because you're OCing me off the center of that objective. So at the end of Orcs turn five, it is 50 points each. It's a draw, and then the game ends. So we hope you enjoyed this battle report. <laughs> uh, this is the way the world... Is. In turn five. Yes. In turn five, five, ten points. You're ten points in the lead. You win. Yeah. And then you get an extra five points for each objective that you're on up to a maximum of 15. So ten points, uh, 15, 20, 25 points in the lead. Yeah. And the orders are to cleanse an objective. You can do that once and capture the enemy outpost, which you've already done. And that's an extra eight points, which will put the Howling Griffins 36 points in the lead. So you are behind, 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 behind. Yeah. It was a draw at the end of my turn five. Yeah. You win by 36 points. I don't think we need to roll any dice down in the middle because Captain Vavar and Murphy will shake hands. <laughs> like gentlemen. You don't have to shoot me or anything with all the other stuff that you've got or the eradicators that are about to jump through there and melt her into them. 
Uh, we just Murphy senses that the tide has changed. He came to smash through these walls, right, and take their city. And there was some glorious stuff. He watched Jugger, Grugger Chugger get ripped apart, and that made him smile. Um, he saw some explosions down here that made him smile. But he's in the middle of that brew down there, and he has a look around him and realizes all of his mates have gone. He's got the biker. What was he? In? Oh yeah, the biker down there. He's going to pull wheelies and go back off into the. There's more of a speed wire back. It's not because he doesn't want to come into the city. It's just some lads in the speed wire over the left there. They're, they're calling him. Well, orcs never lose. They, they just fall back and come, come at you again. That's a good point. So even though the Howling Griffins are 36 points in the lead, I think we can all agree that there has been a fight this day. And if orcs fight, orcs win. So it's a victory for Murphy and his war. <laughs> Happy war gaming.